What's poppin' variants? It's me, MT, and welcome back to the Heavy Spoiler Show. I cannot tell you how much I love that dang Loki finale, y'all. I truly could not imagine a more fitting ending for a reformed god who has coveted a throne all of his life. And seeing Loki transition from an agent of chaos and death to a defender of order and life has been literally one of the most rewarding journeys in all of the MCU, especially getting to see that incredible imagery of Loki converting the sacred timeline from an unholy halo powered by the illusion of choice to a beautiful free growing tree of infinite possibilities. Today we're going to break down the science behind Loki's ascent to his cosmic throne and how the green glow of the MCU's new multiverse tree relates to the green time infinity stone. So let's get into it nerd gang. All right so I believe that essentially what we saw Loki do at the very end of the season 2 finale was become both a living battery and a living tempad for the multiverse following Loki's dissipation of that huge explosion of energy that threatened to destroy the TVA and all of his friends. After Loki uses his godlike power over the manipulation of time to stop the destruction of the exploding time loom, all of the rainbow strands of the multiverse turn black to show how all the energy from every moment in time from every universe in the multiverse was beginning to fade away and die, basically being lost to entropy. And like I've said before in previous Loki videos, I strongly believe that every single universe in the Marvel Cinematic Cosmos was filled with the same six energy singularities that also formed the six infinity stones during the Big Bang, with each of those six energies forming and representing a key fundamental force of each universe based on real life science. For example, the blue energy found within the Tesseract was meant to be Marvel Studios' fictional representation of the real life scientific concept of dark energy, which is basically the completely invisible force that scientists attribute the rapid expansion of the universe to. Like every single second since the Big Bang, our real life universe has been growing bigger and bigger and higher and further and faster thanks to the super fast and super powerful cosmic expansion power of dark energy. And because of this, dark energy actually makes up a whopping 68% of all of space, which is why Marvel Studios decided to make the Space Stone a dark energy stone that Nick Fury was studying at the Dark Energy Mission Facility at the start of Avengers 1. And if you understand this, then you will also begin to understand why Ego the Living Planet had his entire life's mission be centered around his expansion. Because Ego was literally just blue dark energy with a will. And since dark energy is expansion energy, Ego himself sought to mirror that with his own expansion. But anyways, I digress. In fact, our universe is mainly made up of three main elements, with 68% of it being dark energy, like I said before, which the MCU represents as blue, 27% of the universe being dark matter, which the MCU represents as the red ether infinity stone, chaos magic, and black vibranium, with less than 5% of the universe being normal matter that human beings can see and interact with, which the MCU represents with the yellow quantum energy of the mind stone singularity. But those are just three examples. But anyways, because every universe is comprised of these six energies, every thread on the sacred timeline had the multicolored glow of a rainbow until the explosion of the time loom caused all the infinity energy from every universe to start dying simultaneously which basically meant that every atom in existence started to fizzle out in every timeline, causing each to become filled with the same primordial nothingness that the cosmos of light was originally born from before the Big Bang. By attaching himself to all of the threads of the multiverse and shooting his green magic through those threads, Loki was trying to reverse the entropy of the universe by using his own inner stores of massive amounts of godlike infinity energy in order to keep the multiverse alive as he slowly made his way to his throne. Because it is that very throne that is the most important piece of cosmic technology absolutely crucial to helping Loki power his new multiversal tree. Mostly because Loki's throne and Loki's horns are made up of the same big ass chunk of black and gold rock that made up the citadel at the end of time. The same exact type of black and gold rock that he who remains as master tempad was made out of. This is important because I believe this black and gold material has been seen in the MCU before. With the black part of the rock that made up the majority of the asteroid and the citadel 
that sat atop of that asteroid likely being vibranium, as dark matter vibranium has historically been as absorbent as it is durable, which is why it is one of the few things in the universe that can survive constant bombardment by the super hot rainbow radiation shooting out of the sacred timeline at all times for countless millennia. And it's pretty much why when we first see the Citadel last season, the radiation from the timeline can be seen radiating out of the very rock itself, showing that this dark rock has absorbed the rainbow power of infinity creation energy inside of it. But that's just the black part of that asteroid. Now let's talk about the golden part that seems to react to Loki as soon as Loki starts walking on the ruins of He Who Remains as Citadel. Because that gold power is part of an energy that has been present in the MCU before, most notably in both Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania as well as the Eternals movie. Because this golden energy is the yellow energy of the mind singularity, the power of mind and physical atomic matter in the MCU, also known as quantum energy, the same golden energy of the mind stone. In Quantumania, quantum energy was central to Kang's goals because the golden yellow energy was literally what powered Kang's golden time chair. But not only this, but Janet Van Dyne herself would learn that the energy that ran through Kang's chair was neurokinetic. When touching the yellow mind singularity energy in the chair allowed her to connect to Kang's mind and see his memories. And in Eternals, the golden energy that powered the Eternals themselves is also what allowed the Eternals to connect their minds together to form the Unimind that would end up amplifying Cersei's powers to even higher degrees than they became after she was given that golden celestial communication sphere from Ajax's lifeless corpse. This all being said, I believe that all the infinity energy the dark vibranium has stored by being in close proximity to the sacred timeline combined with the neurokinetic golden quantum mind energy that has been linked to amplifying powers in the past is exactly what allowed Loki to have the power to form his new cosmic multiversal tree because i believe that without the golden throne connected to that huge mass of vibranium loki would not have been able to source the infinity energy necessary to bring all of the energy of every universe back to life on his own because as we saw as he approached the throne that boy was struggling he could not do it on his own it is the very throne interfacing with loki's mind that allowed loki the power to make his multiversal yggdrasil with nothing but a thought. The branches of his multiversal tree literally became an extension of Loki's neural network, which is why he was able to hear Mobius talk to Sylvie at the very end of the episode, along with pretty much anything else in the MCU multiverse. He's literally the MCU's god, by becoming a living version of he who remains his tempad, so he could become the benevolent heart of the multiverse itself. But the reason why Loki's multiverse tree is green is not just to represent Loki's magic holding the rainbow thread of the timeline together, much like we can see in close-up shots of the timelines, but also to represent the green time singularity of the MCU, a singularity closely tied to the fundamental force of gravity in our universe. Because much like in our real life, gravity is central to time and actually determines the flow of time. This is one of the biggest reasons why the entire sacred timeline was situated inside of a giant gravitational anomaly that was a black hole. A black hole that was quick to turn people into spaghetti if they didn't have a suit capable of withstanding the immense gravitational pressures of that environment. Green energy has been used to denote gravity in past MCU films, much like it did with the villain Jan Rog using his green gravity gauntlets in Captain Marvel, Doctor Strange using the gravity stone against Kaecilius and Dormammu when he wanted to manipulate time with the time stone, and even Shang-Chi himself appears to wear a green gravity stone necklace given to him by his mother who secretly trained him how to manipulate gravity with that stone in the same way that Wenwu ended up using Shang-Chi's green necklace in order to make all that water float at his house. And it is because of that same green necklace that Shang-Chi is able to make his ten rings float. Thanks to that training from his mom in his childhood, as well as his quick training session with his aunt before the big fight. But anyways, in the same vein, Loki has used his green gravity powers in the past to repel people away, and even used it last season to keep a building from falling on top of him during an apocalypse on Lamentis. The invisible stairs that Loki makes for himself on his way to the throne during the season 2 finale appear to be an extension of his gravity manipulation powers. 
But anyways, by using a combination of science and fiction, it seems like Loki was able to use the green infinity singularity that ran through his body in order to inject surges of raw green time energy into the timeline branches in order to bring the multiverse back to life and give the multiverse a fighting chance to defy the chaotic fate that he who remains planned for it all. But anyways, before we wrap up this video, I do want to talk about whether or not the tree that Loki made in the season two finale was actually the very same Yggdrasil that we were introduced to in the first Thor movie. Because a lot of people on the internet seem to believe that Loki created Yggdrasil when he revived and rearranged the strands that used to make up he who remains a sacred timeline. However, given what has been previously established about Yggdrasil in the MCU, as well as Yggdrasil's roots in Norse mythology, that does not seem very likely. Much like Thor tells Jane Foster in the first Thor movie, Yggdrasil has always been meant to represent the nine main cosmic districts that comprise the 616 universe. This being the case, each of the nine realms in the Marvel Universe can be traveled via spaceship. You just have to have a really good spaceship that is able to make massive consecutive warp jumps at jump points scattered throughout the universe to get to any realm that you want, or even a light speed engine like we see in Captain Marvel, effectively making all the Norse gods of all the realms aliens from the perspective of the average person living on MCU 616 Earth. The Norse gods called Yggdrasil the world tree because it is how they chose to map out the structure of the universe that they watched over. With the occasional lining up of the nine realms every 5,000 years called the Convergence likely serving as inspiration for them adopting the tree symbolism in the MCU because that is when all the nine realms line up perfectly kind of like a tree. But that all being said, the Yggdrasil that Loki and the gods of Asgard have come to know is strictly a concept localized to a specific universe and not one that was originally meant to cover a multiversal scope. So the new tree that Loki made in the finale was merely Loki taking inspiration from his Norse mythological roots and structuring his new multiverse after the only other cosmic structure that he knew the Yggdrasil of his home universe that he wanted so badly to rule over in the past. So to be clear, the Yggdrasil that Loki made in the season two finale is not the same Yggdrasil that comprises the nine realms. What Loki made was a multiverse tree and the Yggdrasil from Norse mythology is specifically a tree for the worlds, the planets of the universe. So these are two different versions of Yggdrasil that we're seeing in the MCU. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. You can follow me at Mastertainment on Twitter if you guys wanna see me tweet some weird shit and really fun theories, but most importantly, follow Heavy Spoilers here on YouTube and wherever we are on the social medias to keep up to date with everything that we do. Also, if you like the video, feel free to give this video a thumbs up because that always helps the channel. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.